Exodus 19, starting at verse number 21. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, Then the Lord told Moses, Go back down and warn the people not to break through the boundaries. Oof. To see the Lord, how they will die. Even the priests who regularly come near to the Lord must purify themselves so that, they, so, that they, so that the Lord does not break out and destroy them. That means kill them. Remember I teach y'all you can never come before the king any kind of way. Verse 23 says, but the Lord, but Lord Moses protested that people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. You already warned us. You told me mark off boundaries all around the mountain to set it apart as holy. Even God has boundaries, y'all. And so we're going to begin to finish our series on boundaries. So while we're standing, I'm a blessed body. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before your throne. Father God, boundaries. Father God, protect us. We understand that you are a consuming fire. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you paid a price and allowed us an opportunity to come boldly through to your presence. Father God, you invite us to make our way through the tabernacle all the way into the holiness of holiness, where once upon a time only the priest can go. But now you allow all of us to go by way of your blood. Let us never take for granted the privilege and the price that was paid so that we could do business inside of your kingdom, Father. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to move forward a little bit. and uh, This is going to be uh, sermon number two on our series for Wednesday nights called Boundaries. As I told y'all, uh, well, I believe it was last week, uh, sitting up in just the beginning's office up there uh, looking at a book that I kept messing with, picking it up, reading through it, putting it down, picking it up, reading through it, picking it down. And I thank God I dropped in my spirit uh, during the consecration to begin to teach on boundaries because we make all these uh, declarations, vows, and promises and New Year's resolutions and we cross into a new year. Uh, but in order to see some of the things that we are believing God from, there is some personal boundaries that you and I need to set to guard that what you need in God to do in your life. Y'all listen to me. Give me a little volume, son. There are some personal boundaries that you and I need to set in your life to guard what you're needing God to do in your life. You can't overstep boundaries and think that God is going to begin to do and bless you with the things you need and asking him for in your life. Some blessings are conditional and some are unconditional. Come on, somebody. God Amen. has done his part, but you and I have to do our part. Are you with me so far? Amen. And so I found out that when you uh, uh, allow healthy boundaries like people, places, and things, <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah, you know, you got to get some healthy places, some healthy people, and some healthy things in your life. And, and if you got some unhealthy places that you go and some unhealthy people in your life, come on, somebody. And some un, uh, Come on, some unhealthy places and things that you go and things that you do, my God, you're overstepping boundaries, my God, that is there to protect you. You right. need healthy boundaries in yeah. your life. Yeah. You need healthy yeah. boundaries in your mind. Boundaries are so broad. And so we're going to go into this, right? Every action, church, uh, we, every, every action we contemplate should be tested by two questions. Is it beneficial? That's the first question. Or uh, will it overpower and enslave me? Come on, somebody. The word of God says, let me read this as I set this up. The word of God says in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, you can write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Of course, Apostle Paul dealing with the Corinthian church, and this is a scripture, my God, dealing with sin and all that stuff, and sexual sin, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, you say, that means you and I, we say, I'm going to put us in there, we say, I am allowed to do anything. That go that attitude, I'm grown, can't nobody tell me nothing. I can do what I want to do. Y'all know how we get, come on. You say, I'm allowed to do anything. This is what Paul is telling the church. He ain't talking to the unbelievers, he's talking to the church. We say, or you say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. I teach y'all just because you can don't mean that you should. Right. You can, I, you and I can do a lot of things, but is it beneficial? Mm -hmm. Who in my life got to suffer if I do that? Yeah. What's going to happen if I do that? Because I'm grown and I can do what I want to do. That's Are y'all with me so far? 
He says, but not everything is good for you. Even though I am allowed, Paul says, my God, to do anything, he said, I must not become a slave to anything. So ask yourself while you're taking notes. I love that you're taking notes and writing on your iPad. My God, ask yourself why it's, on the, why it's fresh on your mind. What am I in prison to? What am I a slave to right now that I shouldn't be? Real quick, are y'all with me so far? So let's think. So then we goes on to say, we got to understand should nothing overpower or enslave us. That with anything that would have detrimental effect on the church or your testimony. Are we enslaved by stuff that is robbing us of our testimony? Remember what I teach y'all. My God, your testimony is a weapon that you and I, I and you get to use against the enemy. My God, it's a whole lot of things people could say about my former life, but it ain't no contamination on my Christian life. Yeah. I did a lot of things before I gave my life to Christ, my God, but it ain't no contamination on my spiritual life. Amen. My God, as I teach y'all, if you don't want people to bring up your past, quit living your past. Amen. And so you got to guard your testimony because it's a weapon that you can use to torment the devil. People could say all kind of stuff about what you used to do, my God, but don't give them no weapon, my God, or no, no advantage to talk about what you're doing since you profess to be a Christian. That's why I tell you, watch what you put on social media. Watch the, the type of pictures, my God. You could be going to a family function, my God, and you having fun just showing up to support your family. And everybody got alcohol and drinking. Y'all know I got family members that ain't saved and so forth. But when you and all them pictures, my God, trying to be cute and trying to be cool, when you got all this alcohol on the table, people going to associate that you are yeah. drinking. Yeah, so pay yeah. attention to your environment. Come on. As I teach y'all that. that, that that has a lot to do with your lifestyle. Because yeah. right. people are very judgmental, and they're more judgmental in the church than they are outside of the church. Right. Right. But you can't criticize people, my God, when they're looking at what's behind you on the picture. Even though you're like, no, nah, I was just there to support my family. Well, that's what you say. They be like, yeah. Uh, Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. We talking about boundaries. We still talking about boundaries. And so anything that can affect or enslave you, my God, you have to guard against. And so we're going to look at three things that affect our action. Put point number one on the screen. Uh, let's look at attitudes and belief. Let's start right there. We're going to make, we're going to do an elementary word, a simplistic word, because I want to teach you, my God. We want to look at attitudes. A lot of us fail to realize, or uh, we just forget how soon we forget, we soon we forget, that attitude has a lot to do with altitude. Your attitude will keep you and mediocrity, or your attitude can, can cause you to soar. You determine that by your attitude. Attitude has, has to do with your outlook on something. As I teach y'all, outlook determines outcome. Outlook determines outcome. For those that ain't used to hearing me say that, write that down. Your outlook, your perception, how you see things, how you view things. The Bible says to the pure, they see things as pure. To the defiled, they see everything as defiled. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And so you got to be very careful who you are talking with because if they are a defiled person, they're going to give you defiled and contaminated advice. Amen. Amen. Are you with me so far? Yes, That's why I said you got to have set boundaries with people. And so outlook, my God, has every, has a, attitude has a lot to do with your outlook. The stance that you take towards your others. That's your attitude. The stand that you and I take towards God. I told y'all before, you'd be surprised how many people are sitting in the body of Christ all around the nation. Pastor Jeff, my God, my God, that's angry at God. Yes, Frustrated at God, saying, why, God? Why did you allow this to happen? If you're a good God, why did this happen? Why so much evil? You would be surprised. And there may be some sitting here, I guess. Maybe that's the other church. It's not 34, 30 going around. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? But you'll be surprised. But your attitude, ask yourself this. I know I love to take time and teach. How is your attitude towards God tonight? Are you, are, are you double-minded when it comes to God? How's your attitude towards reading God's word? Yeah, yeah, How's your attitude yeah, yeah. towards prayer and consecration and all Come that on, type Pastor. of stuff? See, all that affects your life. See what I'm trying to say? Come on, somebody. It's dangerous, my God, to be connected to a local body, my God, and keep a bitter attitude towards God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his grace and mercy, my God, will cover you for a season, but sooner or later you got to get healed. You got to get delivered from that, my God. I don't want to be angry at God. I may ask God some questions, but to be angry and have a negative attitude towards God and talk about God, if you God improve yourself, oh, that's okay. He's a big God, but sooner or later you got to quit talking to God like that. Because when you start proving yourself, it ain't going to be through good times. He may send you through a trial. And then you, gonna, you should be able to say it was good for me that I was afflicted. Don't, 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 don't do God like that. And tell me if you God prove yourself. 
And so we got to begin to, to watch our attitudes. What I'm trying to say, we got to begin to set a boundary when it comes to our attitude. There are some things that has happened to you, and you have questions. It's okay to have questions, my God, but make sure you go to the source. God is your source. Don't go to man. Don't go to somebody that's defiled. Don't go, me and Pastor Jeff might not got all the answers. Go to God. I don't know why that person touched you. I don't know why your daddy did that to you. I can't answer all those questions. My God, go to God. Let him tell you, but be still. And then when he get ready to tell you, can you handle what he finna tell you? Yeah. Yeah, we, I tell y'all, we ask God for stuff, but are you ready for what you ask God for? Right. We want God to do great things, but can you handle what God is asking for? Ah, uh, the blessings make it rich, but it adds no sorrow. Can you handle, my God, what you believe in God for? Because some blessings will overtake you and kill you. Yeah. Everybody that's crying out for money can't handle money. If you're not being a good steward over the little bit, how you God going to bless you with hundreds of thousands of dollars? If you can't be faithful over seven dollars, how you going to bless you with seven hundred dollars? Yes, sir. That's good. Yes, sir. It's real simplicity, but it's the truth. God is trying to train you with the little like he did his pastor with $6 when I came home from the penitentiary. $6 and some change. Mm -hmm. And I was faithful with my tithes. And the rest of it is history. I'm going to leave that alone. Come yeah. on, somebody. But can God trust you? If you can't manage little, how are you going to manage much? If we can't take care of what God is coming in now between these churches, how are you going to bless us with $4 million to renovate this thing? Come on. See, God got to allow you to go through something, my God. He got to try you and prepare you. That's why I tell you stewardship is not just money. It's your life. As I told y'all, my God, on the ten, character, the 10 characteristics of formation, it starts with finances in in the kingdom. Finances has everything to do, my God, with your personal life. When your finances is out of order, your attitude is nasty. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray. Your, your marriage problems, all kind of stuff with finances affect every area of your personal life. And then it rolls over into your spiritual life. Because when you're frustrated, my God, worrying about how you're going to pay bills, you don't want to pray. You don't want to come in the house of the Lord and worship. That's why I tell you, heaviness robs you of worship. Understand how important finances is. That's why I teach y'all as disciples, you got to get your personal life right. Your personal life consists of your finances. And when your personal life is right, it's easy for you to honor God with your finances. Yeah. He don't need it, but he wants you to see your heart. Because when your heart is right, it's easy for you to sow. It's easy for you to be a blessing. People that don't trust God, that don't believe God because of a negative attitude, out of the wrong attitude, out of the wrong perception, they think that we want to ride around in Mercedes Benz all day. So therefore, they hope with hell. Y'all know how we talk about pastors. All they want to do is take the money and steal it. Y'all know, come on, sir, church. But that's not our church because y'all know better because y'all know I can do that, but I don't do that. I drive a 2016 Honda and I can drive whatever. Come on now. Yeah. See, I'm trying to say everybody don't think like that. Don't put all pastors in the same category, baby. On, when you got somebody that's been proving himself to you, separate and submit to it. Because as I'm blessed, y'all blessed. Yeah. I tell y'all the time, I don't want to be blessed and y'all not blessed. Yeah. Is that not what I tell y'all? Okay, amen, 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 amen. So be careful about your attitude towards God. And if you have an attitude and you have a lot of questions, it's okay to question God. I'm not saying you can't talk to God, but be careful. Hurry up and get on the other side of that because it's dangerous to stay right there. Yeah. It's dangerous to stay right there. My God, how is your attitude right now about life? How is life? Some of us, life is on top of us right now. But if you understand the kingdom message, my God, with this book is in your hand, I own your iPad, iPhone. God gave you Genesis 126. He created us in his image. And also God gave us dominion. You have dominion. Every, anything that's enslaving you, anything that has you and I in prison, my God, we are out of order. Not them, we are out of order. Because should nothing be dominate you but the spirit of the living God. That's right. See, I'm to say God gave you dominion, rulership. Should nothing rule you, my God, but the spirit of the living God. And so any hangups and habits and sexual addictions and all of those type of stuff, my God, it shouldn't be ruling you. Even debt should not be ruling you. Yeah, the Bible yeah. says, oh, no, man, nothing but love. I can't yeah, get nobody man. to say nothing right there. Yeah. See, that's about your life. You got to clean up your life as Christians so your life can be a testimony. Yeah. We don't just talk Christ. We walk Christ. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Christians talk about Christ, but a real Christian going to live Christ. Yeah, that's it. So how's your life this afternoon? How's your attitude concerning your life? Think about that. Let me show down how's attitude concerning life right now. How do you feel about life when you wake up? Do you wake up intentional, as Janice would say? Are you, are you intentional about your life? Are you, are you operating in purpose? My God, my God, that's why I tell you when you know what your purpose is, my God, you, you got laser focus. People that know who they are, they got to be pastor. But people who do know who they are, they be led. People that don't know who they are, you have to pastor them. People that know who they are, you lead them. A shepherd leads the sheep. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. That's why I teach y'all. You got to find out what your purpose is. That's why I tell you to go to class like many of you do so you can discover your purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, you need to be bummed, bored, and heaven said, God revealed to me my purpose. But don't ask God that if you're not ready to walk in your purpose because many of you are called to do great things and it may scare you. And you may take off and run like Jonah did <laughs> because you created with a purpose. That's why that bullet didn't kill you. That's why that disease, my God, back then, my God, didn't take you out. Because God got a plan for you. Ask yourself, why did you leave me here, God? Why did I escape? 
You got to begin to do that type of stuff. You got to get that personal, that real with yourself and God. Why am I here, God? Why did, I, why, why did you let me make it out my mother's womb? All the stuff I done been through, life been hard. Life been hard. I've been raising my sisters. I've been raising my kids. I've been raising, come on, some of life has been hard, but why am I still here? Because you got a purpose. You got a purpose. That's why. And you need to find out what it is because when you operate in purpose, your life has meaning. When you don't operate in purpose, you just exist. People that operate in purpose, my God, oh, my God, they live. We're not zombies. Zombies have the appearance of being alive. A person that's fulfilling purpose, my God, they live. They have a, they have a, come on, Pastor Jeff, they have a, they have a aroma. They have a aroma about them. Then they move to the kingdom rhythm. They move to the kingdom rhythm. My God, when you operate in purpose, my God, and your life means something, my God, you would attract, my God, saved and unsaved to you. You have a aroma. Come on, mama, grandma's baked beans. I could be outside to smell them in the house. They had aroma. My God, yes, Lord. So how's your attitude towards life? What about your relationships? It's critical. Attitude affects our relationships. You will never possess, write this down, what you cannot imagine. God dropped it in my spirit, Pastor, because I know what we, we believe in God for. And so I got to begin to stretch even now, my God, my mind, my imagination, my God, and believe God for that, my God. Mm, mm, mm. You can never imagine. I mean, you can never have what you cannot imagine. God cannot, use, God, is, God cannot use you to do great things if you cannot believe him. God cannot use you to do great things if you cannot believe him for great things. Are you with me so far? So turn with me to the book of Mark. Let me give you some scripture on this. Do I got any people that are still dreaming? Or have you stopped dreaming? Don't stop dreaming. Keep on dreaming. Don't count God out. Turn with me to Mark 11, 23 and 24. It says, then God said to the disciples, Mark 11, 23, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, you may be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it yeah. will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Yeah. So I did a little study on it because I really want to understand. We understand we, Jesus is not talking about just a physical mountain. So Jesus points, <laughs> Jesus point, Jesus point is in this scripture is that if believers sincerely, y'all, trust in God and they truly realize the unlimited power that is available through such faith in him, they will see him do mighty powers at work. And so in order to see different mountains move in your life, you got to truly trust and believe. Amen. That's why the Bible says confess and believe. Yeah. You shall be saved. Many people confess, but they don't really believe. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. And so when you're praying during this consecration and when you're praying after the consecration, what you're praying for, do you believe that he can do it? See, see, you're praying, but don't waste your time praying if you don't believe. So, so, so then you got to do like the disciples say, Lord, help my unbelief. Oh, we're going to doubt her and that we're human, my God. But if you're praying, you got to believe. See what I'm saying? You got to believe. You got power on the inside of you. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven lives within. The kingdom of heaven is within. External, my God, God worked through the prophets. Now God says, come and live on the inside of us. See what you You got power on the inside of you, Amen. church. You got power. Should nothing be dominating yeah. you? Should nothing be enslaving you? That's why you have the power to set boundaries. Amen. Set boundaries with them. Draw the line in the sand. Tell them you can't come over at 1 15 in the morning no more. I'm drawing the line in the sand. Come on, somebody. You're not driving my car while you steady making excuses about not going to work. Every time you come hard, come on. You're talking about, well, I went to two jobs and didn't know that. Girl, please. No, 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 no. You got to catch the bus because you won't be driving this car. <laughs> I'm drawing the line and saying, somebody give God a hand in the church. Uh, see, some of y'all want to clap because, see, that's your problem. That's okay. I can't get nobody to say that. All right, there. So let's look, at chapter, let's look at verse 24. He goes on to say, I tell you, you can pray for anything. Listen to the verbiage. New Living Translation. He said, I tell you, you can pray for anything, church. And if you believe, believe that you, you received it, it will be yours. You can pray for anything if you believe that you received it. So let me go a little scripture. This scripture places... Uh, places not, no limits on believers' prayers. Watch this, though. As long as they are according to God's will and his purpose. Yeah. I always teach you, we're praying for stuff, and with some of the stuff we're praying for, it may be according to God's will, but is it his time? Yeah. Is it your time yet? And so make sure that your prayers, my God, is according to his will, so when you don't see the heavens open, you're not going to be frustrated at God because you feel like you've been praying, he ain't answered your prayer. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I'm speaking from experience because I've been praying and believing God for a lot of things. And one of them is my son. Yeah. 
And so therefore, when Jacob got his life right, it gives me hope every time I say, that's why I cry. When he was here last time, I hugged mama right there and started crying. She loved on me because Jacob made me cry because I'm believing God for my baby. I've been asking God since I got saved. The Bible says in the book of Acts that if I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart, I shall be saved, me and my household. I'm standing on that. It ain't happened yet, but I'm standing on it. And I do not doubt. And I do not doubt. I believe God's going to do it. So you got to make sure that you're praying according to his will. See, I'm trying to say many of us has formulated attitudes and ups we are upset about life, upset towards God because we pray and expecting God to do things. But God said, that wasn't according to my will. Where did that come from? That's your yeah. will. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will yeah. be done. You got to make sure your prayers is according to God's will. And then you got to mix patience with faith. Yeah. Then you got to mix patience with faith. Then you got to mix patience with faith. We say we got faith. Now you got to have patience to allow God to execute. God is a master chess player. He got to move some stuff around. Come on. He got to bring this person, move that person, get that, allow that person to get fired so you can get in a job. You got to graduate school. You got to get, come on, somebody. God got to move this thing around. You got to be patient. It takes patience to do the will of the Father. Thank you, Lord. See, we too impatient. My God, we want it right now. We want it right now. And when it don't happen, we get angry. We get frustrated. We get bitter instead of better. I know the Spirit of God is speaking in here. Hide your attitude tonight. Are you with me so far? Yes, Beliefs are anything that we accept as truth. This is truth. This is the Constitution. If you want to know how, if you want to, know how to do business, I taught y'all Sunday in this kingdom, you got to read this. This is the book. Now, there is some extensions. There is some people that have wrote books, like Dr. Wolf has wrote several books, my God. But everything can be traced right back to thus says the Lord from Genesis to Revelation. When you're reading stuff and it don't line up with this and it tell you this and that, and you know, no, 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 This is it right here. This is truth. This has not been out of circulation in over 2,000 years or 4,000 years, however long it's been, Dr. Vogt, my God, but it has not went out of circulation. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but the only thing else going to be, I mean, the only thing going to be left is the word of God. The Bible says God going to burn up everything. He's going to burn this thing up. But the only thing going to be left is our teach y'all is that right there. And so why not anchor yourself? Why not build yourself on the word of God when this is truth? He said he's going to burn up everything, Brandon. Everything going to burn up but the word. How is the word going to escape the fire? So I said, me talk to some of y'all over. How is the word going to escape the fire? When he said, I'm going to burn up everything, but I'm not going to touch my word. Because his word is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So he can't burn up his own self. So you better anchor yourself, my God. You better anchor yourself on God's word. See what I'm trying to say? So why not build yourself? That's why I told you I'm not deviating. Many pastors have shipwrecked because they got off doctrinally, and they have got off, got, got off morale, morally, and they have got off spiritually. The three things that as pastors and leaders you have to guard, your doctrine. He taught me that and be your spiritual life, yeah. my God, and your morale. Yeah. You got to guard those things because it's easy to get off. Yeah. Well, don't get intoxicated with your harvest. When God starts blessing you, when God fill up the churches, my God, we got to stay humble like we are, and we cannot get intoxicated off of our harvest. Yeah. Many people, my God, they started from nothing. When God started giving them some, they start deviating. They start compromising the truth. Come on, they start trying to make their own doctor. They start formulating their own institution. Yeah. Oh, my God, they try to put God in their institution. The devil is a lie can't make God join your institution. We got to join God's institution. The devil, Christianity is, ah, come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. It's the truth anyhow. I promise you it's the truth anyhow. Yes, yeah, build your life up on this right here. This is the truth right here. Are you with me so far? Beliefs, again, let me say it again, like anything that you self is truth. What is truth to you tonight? Some of you, do you doubt this? If you have questions, go to God. Lay on your face. Push your plate back like we're doing and say, God, speak to me about this. If your word is true, prove it to me. My God, he will, but be ready. Okay? Let me move a little farther. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. Yes, sir. You are going to, you're going, you're going to have to know how to believe him for many things. Let me say that right there. In the ministry, you're going to have to know how to believe him for many things. Bishop taught me, if you can't believe God for $100, you're not ready for ministry. How's your attitude towards money, see? Because you're not going to believe God for $100 if your attitude is negative towards money. Yeah. If he can't trust you to pay $10 on $100. Mm. Good. 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 Attitude is a cold-blooded weapon yes, that can work for you and also can work against you. Yeah. Right. You determine that, not God. Amen. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. 
Often we do not see, my God, an attitude or belief as a source of discomfort in our lives. Often we do not see that an attitude or, or, or a belief system is a discomfort in our life. Everything ain't horizontal. Everything ain't your neighbor's fault. Everything ain't your pastor's fault. Everything ain't your husband's fault. Everything ain't your wife's fault. Everything ain't your kid's fault. How about your attitude? You sure you can become an enemy to your own self because of this right here? See what I'm trying to say? A negative attitude, a wrong attitude, my God, wrong beliefs and attitude can cause, y'all listen to me, discomfort mm -hmm. to your own life. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that we are about, and which is it is, we are our biggest enemy? Yeah. The, the devil just sitting back watching us destroy ourselves, all professional be Christians. Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm trying to say? Your attitude, y'all catch that, brings a lot of discomfort to your life and my life. You got to clean your attitude up. You got to clean it up. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. See what I'm trying to say? Let this mind be in you. How do you get God's mind? You got to open up the Constitution. You got to read the truth, the Bible. You got to allow God to wash your mind. Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Cross over. Go from a caterpillar to a butterfly by the renewing of your mind. My God, your attitude consists of your thoughts, your belief. That's your mind. Renovate your mind. God, go up into the attic of my mind and clean up my mind. Think about the attic. You got all the stuff that you don't want nobody to see or you tired of dealing with. There's so much stuff that's stored up in the attic of our mind. Yo, you know that your mind is your garden? Come on, my God. He said, Adam, in the garden. He said, take care of the garden. Work the garden, baby. Your garden is your mind right now. Come on, somebody. Your mind. In the New Testament, who we are today, your garden is your mind. Your thoughts, baby. Your yeah, thoughts, yeah. my God. We're not shoveling, my God, in a natural garden. We're shoveling in our mind. What's going up in your mind right now? What's up in your attic right now? What box need to come down, my God? What suitcase up there that got a bunch of junk in it, my God? Ooh, what is your belief system? What is your personality like? Come on, somebody. Attitude. Many of us shipwrecked and lost things and gave up stuff because of wrong attitude. We have shipped and left stuff and left stuff. Come on. Well, some of us left blessings in 2018 that should have crossed over in 2019, but our attitude was too negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God, I need to leave that alone. But is your attitude causing you more discomfort? I've been studying, so I put something out there on Facebook. I know many of y'all didn't comment. Uh, some of y'all might have just looked at it. And <laughs> but I talked about sheeps and goats. Sheep and goats. See what I'm trying to say? So, therefore, we got to recognize what, he, what we are. Because some of us think that, let me be careful. Some people think, thank you, Holy Ghost, that they sheep. When you watch their behavior and you see their internal heart, Mind, they really operate as goats. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I know that said. I said some of us think that some people think you only goats, think that they sheep. But when you watch the internal, Jesus said, uh, look at the inside, clean up the inside. Yeah. And some people's attitudes and behaviors and rebellion mm -hmm. and bucking That's and right. criticizing and questioning, they operate as goats yeah, in sheep's clothing. I know the Bible calls them wolves, but they're goats. Yeah. And I asked y'all a question, my God, what separates a sheep from a goat? Hmm. And many of you talk, some of you talk about a goat, you might always rebelling. One thing about a goat, it always hops the fence. Hmm. Sheep stay in the fence. They may get out, but you go get them, they'll come back. A sheep will submit to the overseer. The sheep follow God's voice. So ask yourself, my God, are you here tonight, but you got a goat man uh, attitude, Ooh. even though you're here tonight? Ooh. That's everywhere. Ooh. And it's in here too. Angry, frustrated, deviated, shifted. Mm -hmm. But you know, people will shift on you. I'm teaching y'all boundaries. People will shift on you and you I never got. know it. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is just keep watching them. Just keep yeah. watching them, daughter. Yeah. People going to shift on you. Mm -hmm. People won't speak to you. People walk past you. All that stuff. You got to think about all, all that stuff, all that stuff. You know, come on, somebody. Yeah. God sees all that from the pastor on down to the sheep. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? See, all that stuff matter. Remember, I care about your life. And so we got to look at this stuff. How are you on your job with your supervisor? What type of mindset? How, how, have you shifted? You used to be real high. When they first gave you the job, you was excited. You loved everybody. Now you don't even want to speak to nobody when you go to work. You just shifted on them. Because you want the promotion and you train the person for the job, the promotion that you want. But what disqualifies you is the discomfort of your own attitude. And so if you do a self-examination, as Paul said, examine yourself daily, you find about you'll, you'll trace the root back to you. You the one disqualifying yourself from the promotion. They ain't hating on you. They ain't jealous and they ain't racist. Mm -hmm. It's your attitude. Yeah. Christians. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank we you. must own our attitude. Let me move. We must own our attitude and conviction. We must own our attitude and conviction. Be quick to repent. 
As I told you, that's one of the things, reason why God called David a man after his own heart, because if David made a mistake, he repented, and he never went back to it. Oh, Own your convictions. I teach y'all, anytime your conviction be drop below a five, you're in trouble. Conviction should be at least set six on up to ten. Ten is high. When your conviction drop below a five, and you operate in two and three, that means you'll do anything. That means, my God, that means you, you, you won't even listen. I yield. I surrender to the Holy Spirit because your conviction is too low. You'll do anything and you don't even care. That is going to affect your witness. It's going to bring shame on God. It's going to bring shame on your church. It's going to bring shame on your pastor. It's going to shame on your brother and sister. Even shame on you and your children. You don't care because your conviction is too low. And many Christians have very low conviction. That's why sin is so rapid. When we're supposed to rule it instead of it rule us. Boy, that's good. You got to pray to God raise your yeah. conviction. You know how you get your conviction strong? Loving what God love and hate what God hate. Yeah. You know how you increase your love? By spending time with God. Yeah. I've always tell you, go back to one thing. You got to flip those pages, baby. Mm -hmm. You got to spend time flipping them pages, growing in the dark. Right. See what I'm trying to say? You got to flip the pages, baby, and ask God to increase my conviction. Some of us is okay, and I love you, and God going to forgive you. But some of us, my God, if we set some boundaries, we'll stop doing a whole lot of things. There's habits and hangs up now, right now. If we ask God to increase our conviction, mm -hmm. remember as I teach y'all, one thing we do not want to be is hypocrites. Right. If you don't want to be a hypocrite, you got to raise your level of conviction. Why? Because your conviction will keep you. Mm -hmm. When you want to, because we are human beings and we all stumble and fall, but the conviction says, I can't. Mm -hmm. right. I can't sin against God. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't do that. I just can't do that, Jackie. I, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not going to act like I'm just not going to treat that. Yeah. I need to repent to Pastor. Yeah. Pastor, need to repent to me. I need to repent to you. I've done it to all y'all before. I ain't got no problem with that. We had poxies and everything we can do. Yeah. What Pastor asked y'all, my God, when it's free? <laughs> <laughs> to come up here, you know what I'm saying? When the Pastor have done something, let's get it right. Yeah. Yeah. What Pastor do that? Tell the body of Christ, get up here. I'm right here. If you got something you need to do, we need to talk about it right here. Let's line up, baby. Let's get it. Yeah. That's because I love you. Mm -hmm. That's because I love you. And I ain't never proclaimed to be God. And I ain't never proclaimed to be perfect. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? I'm going to stumble. Amen. But as I teach y'all, don't hold me accountable to living right and you don't get to yeah. live right. Come the on, devil sir. is a lie. Mm -hmm. If you expect for me and Pastor Jeff to live something, I'm going to hold yeah. your butt accountable to live something. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. It's tight, but it's right. Mm -hmm. Going off of Christ, give God a hand. Yeah. So I'm going to get off of it. Let's go to behaviors. After you deal with attitude, now attitudes affect your behaviors. Keep your heart right, though. Don't have a form of godliness. Let me say that, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Don't sit up here and sit around here. My God, you know you didn't shift it. Shift. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I ain't afraid to say it. Shift. Mm -hmm. Behaviors. How's your behavior? Attitude affects your behavior. Attitude affects behavior. Behaviors have consequences, church. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 34. Uh, this is in a one-year reading. How many of y'all read your one-year Bible today? Thank you for opening up the scripture. Let me see them hands again. How many of y'all read your one-year Bible? Okay, everybody in there, they got their word out. Turn with me to Genesis 34. Let me read this right quick. 34.1. It says, one day Dinah and the daughters of Jacob, 34.1, uh, and Leah went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. Verse 2 says, but when the local prince, Shechem, son of Hamor, the Heftite, saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her. Can I, let me pause right there. If you want to know how to pronounce Old Testament words, come to first service. It's amen, amen, because it's a lot of words that I was mispronouncing. I told y'all this before, haven't I, y'all? You know what I'm trying to say? And I sit right there, and I listen to him, and I look over there at Caleb, and he just shake his head, and I shake my head because I don't know how he knew that word. You know what I mean? But if you want to learn how, just come see. Because, you know, the Pastor Jeff is a professor at ORU, and he's just very, he's very it's so much. It's just, it's just an honor Amen. that God loved me enough to allow me access like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't pay me no man. That's why I go like I go, because God got so much favor yeah, yeah. on my life. Yeah, yeah, that's why I love God the way I love God. Mm. I said, that's why I love God. Anytime God bless you, and it, 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 it should increase your love. It should increase your tenacity. It should increase your hunger. When God been good to you, my God, it should make you fall more in love with him. Falling in love with Jesus, my God. Don't get me started. I'm trying to behave myself. Oh, God been too good to us. Somebody stand up and give God a hand in the church, man. Oh, my God. Mm. Whole lot of favor. Whole lot of favor. Whole lot of favor. 
Yeah. It says, but, but, but verse 2 says, but when the local prince Shechem, son of Hamar, the Heptite, saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her, y'all. Listen to him. We're talking about consequences of behavior. But, but then he fell in love with her. <laughs> he raped her and then fell in love with her. It tends to happen. And he tried to win her affection with tender words. He tried to win her affection with tender words. Then he says in verse 4, he said to his father, Hamar, Hamar, get this young girl. I want to marry her. Jump over to verse 13. It says, but, but since Shechem defiled their sister, Dinah, Jacob's sons responded deceitfully to Shechem and his father, Hamar. Or Hamar. They said to them, we couldn't possibly allow this because you're not circumcised, meaning that she, they wanted to marry. He wanted to marry her. It, wouldn't be a, it would be a disgrace for our sister to marry a man like you. Verse 15, but here is a solution. Remember, the brothers of Dinah is acting deceitfully. Here is the solution. If every man among you will be circumcised like we are, then we will give you our daughters as well. And, we, and we'll take your daughters for ourselves. We will live among you and become one people. But if you don't agree to be circumcised, we will take her and be on our way. Hamar, verse 18, and his son Shechem agreed to their proposal. Jump down to verse 24. So all the men, because Hamar and Shechem was, was respected people, so it says all the men agree. Y'all with me so far? So all the men in the town council agreed with Hamar and Shechem, and every male in the town was circumcised. But three days later, when their wounds were still sore, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, who were Dinah's four brothers, mama and daddy, took their swords and entered the town without opposition. Then they slaughtered every male there, including Hamar and her son. And his son, Shechem, they killed them with their swords, then took Dinah from Shechem's house and returned to the camp. So here it is, Hamar raped, I mean Shechem raped Dinah. Mm -hmm. So therefore they made a treaty, the sons made a treaty, said, look, we can't do nothing, we can't move forward, I'm paraphrasing, until you get circumcised. How many of y'all know what circumcision is? Circumcised, okay, okay, so, 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 so they let them cut and let them bleed, and that's very painful, and then they moved in for the, as we say in the streets, for the kill. Look at the enemy. He wait till you bleed, then he move in for the kill. See, he ain't going to mess with you when you're healthy. He going to wait till you're wounded and offended and all that type of stuff, and here he come. He going to wait till your heart is shifted. He going to wait till you occupy. He going to wait till you as Christians and us as Christians operate and get in that goat spirit, and then here he come for, oh, my God, here he come for the kill. And so, therefore, uh, uh, Shechem uh, did something by raping, my God, Dinah. And, uh, and then, because they, they agreed to the treaty, he got everything connected to him killed. My God. Throughout the story, everybody got killed. And the Bible says they went off from there. Jacob, them, his son, all them, were, their sons went off from there and raided it yeah. and took all the plunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm trying to say? But who in my life got to suffer yeah. because I made a decision? That cost my whole family and everything connected me to lose. See that? Y'all catch the story? Yeah. Behaviors have consequences. Just because you can don't mean you're supposed to. Yeah. Everything is permissible and everything ain't beneficial. Right, right. See what I'm trying to say? He did that, you know what I'm saying? Even though he fell in love with her and he wanted to marry her to try to justify him raping her, but there's still a scar. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's still a scar. And so therefore the brother said, I can't let this ride. You touch mine. We feel I got to handle you. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So I got to come up with a master plan. Thinking of a master plan. Ain't nothing but sweat inside my hand. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See what I'm trying to say? And so they thought of a master plan. They said, I got to get this back. Even though the Bible tells us now the New Testament don't render evil for evil. Vengeance is God. Uh, but, the, but, the, but her brothers weren't trying to hear that. They said, I'm trying to told you they got to pay for that. And they killed everything. But, but, but Shechem caused it. Shechem caused it. Are you causing it? Remember I told you, attitude brings discomfort in your life. Are yeah. uh, you causing some of the squeeze that you're in? Because mm -hmm. attitudes and behavior? It ain't every man's fault. Yeah. If he didn't put no gun to your head, then it's mm -hmm. your fault. Mm -hmm. If he ain't got you held hostage, then your fault. Where the boundaries at? Mm -hmm. If God delivered you from him before, mm -hmm. and you know how his character is, why you keep going back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your fault. Don't blame God for that because now he's back doing the same thing that he, for God once delivered you from. He answered your prayer and you returned back to your vomit. Mm -hmm. That's worse. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Men, men, mm -hmm. what behavior? Mm -hmm. 
You ask God to bless you with the job, now you got it, now you don't even honor him. You ask God to do it for you, you ask God to bless you with her, are you loving her as Christ loved the church? Come on, Pastor. Come on, somebody. That's an ouch and ooch for me as well. Mm -hmm. See what I'm trying to say? See, we got to look at this type of stuff. Attitudes affect behaviors. Mm -hmm. A whole race of people got killed behind one decision. Behind every decision, there's consequences. I said before you, life and death, blessing and curses, choose life. What, oh, what decisions are you choosing? Mm -hmm. That's affecting your behavior. That's calling stuff to die. Potential and purpose to die and lie God, dormant. Come on, somebody. We got to think about this stuff. We're talking about boundaries. Oh, the safest place is in God's will. Yeah. Yeah. The safest place is in God's will. Conviction will keep you in God's will. Mm -hmm. Proper attitude will keep you in God's will. Proper decisions and choices will keep you in God's will. Submission will keep you in God's will. Order will keep you in God's will. My God, properly honoring God with your giving will keep you in God's will. Loving thy neighbor as thyself will keep you in God's will. <laughs> Being quick to forgive will keep you in God's will. When you at the altar praying and you have art against your brother or sister, leave thy gift. That means your money. Leave it to her. I don't want it. My God, God said, go be restored to her and then come back and offer your yeah, gift yeah, unto yeah. me. Offer your prayers unto me. Offer your affection unto me. Until then, if you got a problem with Francetta, she's sitting right here. Why are you down there praying when Francetta's sitting right there? I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah. Deal with it. Whatever you don't confront, don't. Change. Whatever you don't confront, don't. Change. Oh, my God. Y'all with me tonight. Give God a hand. Come on, go on for Christ. Mm -hmm. So attitude, it has consequences. Paul says that a man reaps what he sows. Of course, Galatians 6 and 7, write that down. Galatians 6 and 7. My God, if we pray, we will reap good fruit. If we go to work, then we will get a paycheck. I'll send y'all a, a, a clip, my God, on Facebook from Dr. Miles Monroe. Some of y'all ladies need to go back and look at that. You know what I'm trying to say about work? If he ain't working, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first assignment God gave man when he created him, Papa Volk, was work. Go take care of the garden. I mean, by now, come on, you should have a job. Well, I got a record. You know how I many people, people are now starting to understand that some of the best workers is coming out of prison because they hungry for a job and they want to work. Yeah. Don't tell me you can't get no job. The devil's a lie. And if you're in God, God going to get, come on. If you're in God, you can put them and say, God, hey, God, come on now. I'm trying to live this thing. That's why I thank God. My God, God knew that I loved him, y'all. And he knew that I want to live right. And he summed me straight to Eddie Miller, him, who yeah, gave me a job yeah. working with people with development this week, because God knew that if I didn't have a job, I was going to return back, my God, to the streets. And so God said, it's too much. He, he loved me, and I know he do, so I'm going to do a miracle. Yes. So I'm going to run his OSBI. Amen. They ran my OSBI, and they came back clean. I've been in prison twice and been convicted of five after formers. You know what I mean? They ran my OSBI. Some of y'all know the testimony. They came back clean. Eddie testified. He told y'all that. They ran back clean, came back clean like I had never, ever been in trouble in my life. Yeah. Clean. <laughs> God wiped it clean. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Yeah, but see, but see, we, I, I, and I just, I just have to say this because God knew that I loved him. Yeah. And he knew that as he blessed me, because God know me better than I know myself, and God know you better than you know yourself, God knew that if I do this for him, he's going to run hard for me. Yeah. And he's going to become something, my God. That's why I spared him. That's why I didn't let him die when he got cut. That's why I didn't let him die when he got shot all up. That's why I didn't spare his life when he was held hostage. See, I can go on and on. Baby, I'll tell you, my God, God's hand, yeah. my God. And so God knew that I was going to love him. God knew that I was going to serve him. God knew that I was going to handle this mantle that's on my life, that whoever go, I'm still going on. Whoever turn around, I'm still going on, because he knew he could trust me, my God, with a kind of glory. Ooh, my I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. What am I trying to do? I'm not making it about me. I'm trying to make it about you. Yeah. Attitude. Mm -hmm. God saw my attitude. He saw my heart. Attitude has to do with your mind. Heart. Let this mind be in you. My God, heart in the New Testament deals with your mind. What is your mind like tonight? Can God bless you? Can God trust you? He can bless you. Can he trust you? What you asking him for? When he do it for you, you're going to stay loyal to him. When he take you from five dollars, my God, to give you twenty five, you go on him. You gonna stay faithful. See, this is the type of stuff you gotta be. Can you handle prosperity? Is your foundation strong enough, and are you rooted enough in God, my God, to where you can handle wealth? God ain't gonna give us no money if we can't handle it, but we can. We already handle it. Yes, Lord. So behavior, 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 behavior. What you sow, you reap. If you sow into the kingdom, the Bible says you reap of the kingdom. That's a principle that unsaved people use. It's people that don't even serve Christ, don't profess to be Christians, that pay their tithes and everything. They understand the principle. More of the world, the secular world, use our principles, kingdom principles, than we do. More of the secular world, unsaved people, my God, operate and use the principles of the kingdom more than we do. They ain't thinking about no Jesus Christ, but they show sure think about those principles because the principles don't change. Principles don't change. 
As the man of God said, he said, after three years walking with you, I finally understand why your life is like it is because you operate off of principles. Mm -hmm. I don't deviate from the principles. Mm -hmm. I don't deviate from the principles. It's a mandate mm -hmm. to walk in order. It's a mandate to take care of yourself, take care of business. That's why we do the things we do. Many of y'all not used to taking care of. Can you be faithful in another man's vineyard? Mm -hmm. God said, if you be faithful in another man's vineyard, this Pastor Jeff did vineyard. See, the time we treat it like ours. He hate for me to talk like this. Our vineyard, but it's Pastor Jeff. We know what it is. That's why I'm teaching y'all, my God. If you be faithful to another man's been your God will give you yours. Yeah. Amen. See, I'm to say, learn how to serve. That's a servant's heart. That's, yes. it. Yes. That's a servant's heart. Yes. That's a servant's heart. Yes. That's an attitude that God can use. Yes. Somebody give God a hand. I missed y'all with that right there. Yes. My God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For those that support a just beginning, when you're serving a just beginning, let me go ahead and validate the woman of God. I ain't spoke on her, but I will. Let me go ahead and validate her. For those that's connected just beginning, anything that you do with that, you're serving in another woman's vineyard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you help her build her, in, her, her business, what about that business in you? You got to have seed in the ground. Yeah, you Thank you. Y'all understand that. Y'all caught that. <laughs> Y'all caught that. What you sow until you reap of. That's a principle. That will not ever change. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest time, sowing and reaping. What you sow until you reap. When you sow into a man's anointing, you reap of it. That's why I thank God that I get the opportunity to be a blessing to the pastor. And not just because he's sitting there. As well as bishop. Sometimes I just walk up to him and, uh, her mother, uh, teaching you. You got to, what you sow until you reap of. That's why sometimes, and I, ain't, I don't mm, walk up to your pastor, uh, Hmm. Like y'all do, and y'all do a good job of loving on y'all pastor. See what I'm trying to say? But you got to understand that's a principle. That's a reciprocal principle. Amen. It'll come back to you, press down, shaking together, and running over what God calls men. Don't you know how God blesses you through people? Yeah. Amen. Amen. People is the agents to advance God's kingdom. We. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful, my God, that you don't shift and have negative attitudes towards people because God will bring people into your life that's assigned to enhance and bless your life, yeah. and you yeah. cut them off too soon. You just cut off your blessing. That's why I say some of us left blessings in 2018 because we disconnected from the wrong people and we held on to the. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. My God. Mm. Just remember, so on the reaping. So if we exercise, you'll feel better. Don't complain about health and you ain't taking care of yourself. On the negative side, if we sow idleness and irresponsibility, or out of control behavior, we can expect to reap poverty. Poverty, idleness. What I don't know produce from, from poverty. I mean idleness. Find something to do. As I taught y'all, if you're not working, come up here and help clean up the church. I can find a whole lot of stuff for you to do. That's a whole lot of stuff that we got to get done. My God, it, it, time, talent, and treasure. But see, we don't see taking care of God's house. Just write down the book of Haggai. Read the book of Haggai. God said, What you bought home, I blew away. And they couldn't understand why come their blessings weren't increasing. And he said, because you're too busy living in your paneled houses, you're too concerned about your own house, and you neglected the temple. Mm -hmm. See what I'm trying to say? That's the physical temple as well as the spiritual, your, your body. See what I'm trying to say? you too busy worrying about yours, and you forget about God. That's why I tell you, if you see it, you own it. You see some paper, pick it up. Amen. See what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm saying? Don't leave trash all on the floor and stuff like that. This is God's house. Them is principles, my God, that many people don't understand because they used to live in raggedy lives and they want to bring that raggedy attitude and raggedy spirit into the house of the Lord, my God, and treat this any kind of way. Not on my watch, the devil is alive. This is all the instruction. This is the embassy. This is where the glory is. Who has watchmen and gatekeepers? We got to protect the glory. The glory is inside of this church, my God. You can't just let anything come off in here and contaminate the glory of the Lord. See, them is principles that you honor God with blessings, and he already doing it. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This sound principle, Brandon, you, you're catching me some. This matters in her. It might not be the best of buildings, but it matters. Amen. Keeping it swept and smelling good and mopped and windows clean and stuff like that. Some of y'all think I'm crazy. No, I ain't crazy. I'm just operating in principles. Thank you. That's right. And that's why God has given us favor in her and out there. Oh, yeah, I love it. Come on, write down, write down Proverbs 15.10. It says, whoever abandons the right path will be severely disciplined. Whoever hates correction will die. Whoever abandons the right path, there's a way that seems right to you and I that leads to death. There's a way that seems right. Make sure that the way that you're talking about going, make sure it's God. Make sure it's God. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The safest place is in his will. I promise you, if you are in God's will, he will not lead you wrong. You and I, I and you might not understand everything that's in his will, but trust me, he got you. 
If it turn out that way, y'all know the song, God got you. Yeah. If it turn out the other way, God got you. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So you got to stay in his will. You got to stay in his will. Don't be a goat. A goat don't like correction. A goat will leave the path that leads to life. I said there's a way. There's a way that seems right. Just because it seems right to you, but is it God's way? Just because it seems right to me, but is it God's way? Remember I told y'all, it lines up, it looks good, but is it God? It, every, every I dot, every T cross, but is it God? So therefore, you got to look at the natural, and you got to get still to look at the spiritual. You got to look at the natural, and then you got to get still to hear God's voice concerning the spiritual when it, when it comes time to make decisions. Look at the natural, and then also look at the spiritual. Yeah, yeah. That means get still. See if you can trace it throughout the scripture. Mm-hmm. See if you can trace it throughout the scripture, because I guarantee you what God has asked you to do, you're going to be able to trace it and find some evidence in the word of God. But you got to get still, and you got to allow God to point you in the direction of his word, because he's not going to go against his word. Whatever God calls for, he provides. Number three, let me get out the way. Choices. Attitude, behavior, and then choices. Everything ends right here. What we gonna do? Mm-hmm. We're gonna continue to kill giants. Somebody say, down, go Goliath. Down, go Goliath. So attitude affects behavior, and behavior affects choices. We must take responsibility for our choices. Oh my God, this leads, uh, this leads to the fruit of self-control. Oh my God, if we could just we, not child, if we could just think about it, if we would have had self, stronger self-control and stronger conviction. Oh As I teach y'all some of the pain that you and I have right now, some of the stuff that's up in our attic right now, mm-hmm. we would not be having some of this pain if we would have exercised one of the fruits of the spirit, which is that's self-control, right. our self-discipline. Because we was not taught, well, we rebel against discipline. We, I was going to say it all because we all have. We got pain that we probably shouldn't have never had because we lacked it and still lack some self-control. I just can't seem to shake it because you keep feeding. Anything you feed will live. Anything you don't feed will die. You keep going back to the very stuff because you don't have no control. You know why you don't have no control? Because you ain't spend enough time with God. Mm-hmm. Romans 6, 7, and 8. Whichever one is your master, that's who you submit to. Don't you know your flesh can be your master? Don't you know we can be a slave unto our flesh? Our appetites that's fleshly and ungodly, our carnality. Mm-hmm. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, there's pain that we have right now. Watch this. I'm trying to help us. There's pain that we have right now. A common boundary problem is disowning our choices. A common boundary problem is disowning our choices. That's good, and trying to place blame for them or someone else. I call this deflecting responsibility. When you don't want to own up. When you don't want to man up. Everything is her fault. If she do this. If he do that. Come on somebody. If that man would have did this. If she wouldn't have done that. If the supervisor. See we did deflecting responsibility. Right. You got to own your choices. If did nobody make you do it against your will. You have to own your own choices and decisions. And that's one of the things that I'm that's one of the things that I was grateful for that my life with the way it used to be before I gave my life to Christ wasn't nobody's fault, Patrice, but mine. Yeah. Did nobody make me join the gang? Did nobody make me start selling dope? Did nobody make me start smoking crack cocaine? None of that stuff. I chose to do that. Yeah. Nobody. And so why are you blaming everybody for your condition when you chose to do it? That's right. You're sitting up here, you can't get past the unforgiveness and bitterness because you're blaming somebody else for why you bitter. When you chose it to allow it to happen. You didn't have no boundaries. You let people mishandle you because you ain't got no boundaries. You let people talk to you and, mis- and, and treat you any kind of way because you ain't got no boundaries. My God. Some of us, my God, you know why we don't have no boundaries? Boundaries, my God, my God. You know why? Because we need that spirit of affirmation. We need somebody to love us. Some of us can't be alone. So therefore, we just accept anything. That go both ways. We lower our standards because we need a warm body. Because we ain't got no self-control to say no. Mm-hmm. See what I say? So deflect it. You got to be responsible for your own choice. Many of us say, why do I keep attracting the same sorry people? Well, look at you. Look, 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 look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, now, now, let me tell you what I mean by look at you. Look at your attitude. Yeah, yeah. Raise your self-image. Raise your self-esteem. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you with a purpose. My God, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are special. Who is Pastor Jeff said many years ago, God picked you out to pick on you. My God, God love yes. you. God, my God, God died for you and I. Won't you accept who you are? I'm always telling you kings and queens. I'm always building you up. I'm always picking you up. Act like who you are. Amen. 
your kings and your queens. Quit letting people run up and down in and out of your life. Act like who you are. Man, act like who you are, Christians. Your royal priests, your queens and kings, your royalty. Oh, my God. That means some of you got to make some decisions. You got some whole lot of dead weight and a whole lot of mess around. You got to clean that stuff up and get it out your presence. Ah, oh, my God. You got to come on, get this mess up out your life. And act like who you are. Act like who you are. Make decisions and choices. Stay consistent. I know it takes a long time. It does. I just didn't arrive over. Now you're talking about from 95 to present. And you got to continue to be chopping. You got to continue yeah, yeah. to be chopping. You got to continue to be shoveling, my God. Even in the midst of discouragement, even with all this stuff, you got to keep on digging, baby. Don't stop digging. My God, in your life ain't going to change overnight. My God, because you come to church one time out of the week. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You got to keep digging. You got to keep pushing. Yeah. And I promise you, as long as you keep pushing to stay in God's will, you will make progress because everything you and you ain't going to have to do by yourself is not by my might nor by my power, but it's by spirit, said the Lord. Some of the things you're trying to do and accomplish, you're trying to do it in the flesh. Let God do it. Get out the way and let God get in the way. Don't make your walk hard. It's already hard enough dealing with the enemy. Just sit back and relax. Take on God's yoke. Make up your mind that you're going to serve him. Stay committed. Raise your conviction. Watch your attitude, my God. Watch your behavior. What's going to affect your choices? I'm almost due. I'm almost due. I'm almost due. My God. Whoo, thank you, Lord. So quit deflecting responsibility. Own it. That was one of the things that helped me be able to recover. It wasn't nobody's fault, Sharon, daughter, that I was in prison. It wasn't nobody's fault that I became a gangster. It wasn't nobody's fault that I became a drug addict. Them was my choices. Right. Own your choices. Mm-hmm. Own your choices. It'll help you heal. Yes, Lord. I know some of my mamas didn't handle us right. But some of your mamas didn't have a good example either. Give her a pass. I taught y'all that in discovery in class. Think about your think about your grandmother, who was probably wasn't a good example to your mama. And so therefore, how do you expect for her to be a good example to you when she was mishandled? So therefore, she only gonna do with come on, see, produces active his own kind, baby. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I see y'all. I see y'all. Y'all crying. That's okay. But you got to understand. See what I'm to say? You got to understand. You'll say, see, if you look at it, my God, you say, okay, mama did the best she can. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, mama didn't make all the right decisions. Mama didn't make all the right choices, my God. But when I look at mama's, my mom with the seed that mama come from, she didn't really have no good role model herself. Yeah. She didn't have a good image. She didn't have a good model, my God, to pattern her life off of. Now, if you had a good mama that took her business, praise be to God. But many of my daughters up in there, even some of my sons, you didn't have a good father. So just like I did because he died our baby. So you don't know how to be a husband. Your boys is blessed because they know how they get. They got you and mama. And you are, but the boy, if they, tell, if they knew you, don't, boy, don't get it twisted. I'm being serious. I'm being serious, y'all. You see them now. I was talking to mother about three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, in an office, me and her, because we get here about the same time, me and Pastor Jeff, and I said, mother, there's so many people that came to your church that don't know you and Pastor Jeff's testimony. You see them now, but that ain't how they always was. You look at it now, that ain't, that, that, that's part of the finished product, but it, it took a whole lot of hell to get to where they're at right now. Yeah, she ain't trying to say, and so mother got up and grabbed the microphone, and she began to flow in the spirit that same month. And, and I said, sometimes y'all need to tell the people your story yeah. so they can appreciate what they're sitting up under. Uh-huh. That's why I share what I share with y'all. Yeah. Sometimes I'm too transparent. Y'all get on me about that. It is what it is, man, because I want you free. I ain't got nothing to hide. I'm an open book, baby. But what you're seeing right there, it ain't always been like that. If it wasn't for the grace of God. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And I thank God for Papa Wolf. I'm going to bring it on in, but, but Papa Wolf will get up here and tell you he ain't always been the best role model until he met Christ. Thank you. Everything changed then. Yeah. Everything changed then. Thank you, Lord. Papa Wolf was a taskmaster. He had to get it done. You got the man up in that house. Straight up, I'm being serious. Yeah. But when Christ came, it made all the difference. Yeah. Christ will make the difference in your choices. He'll make the difference in your behavior. He'll make the difference in your attitude. Just let him come on in for real. Mm. Let me go ahead and finish this. This is good. We must realize that we are, we must realize, let me close it. We must realize that we are in control of our own choices regardless of how we feel. You are in control of your own choices. An example of this was the prodigal son. Not the one that left, but the one that stayed. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. Thank you for allowing me to go over, but I had passed him here, so I had to spin it a little bit. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but, but, but the prodigal son, the prodigal son, the prodigal son, watch this. He, you got to understand, you are responsible. I told y'all that I, I didn't blame nobody. I didn't blame nobody for my condition. 
So it, brought, it was I was able to heal Kenya quicker because I didn't blame nobody for where I was sitting at in the hogs pen in a six by nine prison cell. I chose to be there twice. God delivered me the first time. My God, when I went back to the streets, and so therefore I had to go back to the hogs pen. Are you making a choice to stay in the hogs pen? Are you making a choice? Let me speak over here. Are you making a choice to stay in the hogs pen? You got an opportunity. I don't know y'all, but you got an opportunity to come out right there. Right. God bought that one out, delivered him from crack cocaine and everything y'all going through so you can be free. And he bought you here so you can hear a pastor that come from the same thing y'all come from so you can be free. You ain't got no, you ain't got no excuse now. Right now. None. Right now. now you got to choose up, baby. So you got to have some freedom and some confidence yeah. to provoke like that. Yeah. I get one shot. I might not never see them again, but they can't say they didn't have an opportunity to get their life to Christ. Right. That's right. I'm not afraid to take advantage. Yeah. I, I don't play with this thing. Yeah. That's right. yeah, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Luke's, Luke the 15, just write it down. Uh, uh, one of them, he chose, the, 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 the son chose to stay home and serve, and then he was resentful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He chose. To stay home and serve, but he was resentful. He made the choice. How you gonna get bitter behind your choice? How you gonna get angry and you made the choice? How you gonna get angry at the pastors when you told us, my God, to pastor your soul? And when we when we say, not now, it ain't time for that right now. Now you mad. Pastor them holding us back. I can't use my gifts. Amen, mother. She agreed. Hey, how, 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 how you gonna get mad at us? Cause we respecting what you told us to do. Right. See, this is real preaching, baby. A pastor should be preaching, teaching, and healing. That's three functions that a pastor should be doing, and you're getting them all tonight. How are you going to get mad when you ask us to hold you accountable? How are you going to get mad at the people that's in your life and you should hold me accountable? And when they call on you, hey, she always bothering me. What she keep calling me for? Quit. We talking about Christians. See, that's a goat mentality. It's a goat mentality. Boy, y'all know I'm trying to build you. So the prodigal son is upset and resentful because the father is celebrating Christ in the story, is celebrating the son that was lost. He said, this brother of yours, this, he said, he even got so angry, he said, this son of yours. He wanted to disassociate himself from his own flesh and blood. He didn't even call him my brother. He said, this son of yours, dad. Yeah. This son of yours. Yeah. That's like me getting mad at John because he became a millionaire and I became a drug addict. I, and I don't want to, that, mama, that's your son. Jealous. The devil is a lie. Yeah. I'm glad he made it because I, mm, thank you. <laughs> Write the check. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let me, let, so, so be careful, be careful. What I'm trying to say is I close it. Thank y'all. I love y'all. Be careful. If, 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 if you are bitter, if you are hurting, if you are struggling behind your choice, if somebody is honoring, thank you, Holy Ghost, and respecting your choice, how you going to get mad at them? How are you going to get mad my, my, because you, you, you said here, I need you to hold this money, mama, and don't give it to me because I need to really take her bid. And you come ask for it a week later, and she says no. And now you angry at your mom. That's my money. That's my money. You, yeah. See, that is so out of order. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know y'all can agree with that. Don't ask people to do something that you're not ready for. Yeah. The safest place is in his will. He wasn't satisfied with his own choice. He was not satisfied with his own choice. You made the choice. So if you're going to be angry, don't be angry at God. Yeah. Be angry at yourself. Amen. And then if you're going to get angry at yourself, be quick to say, okay, God, I did it. I'm upset with me. Get to the presence of the Lord and get it up off for you so you can move on. Life ain't over. Don't you know we're going to continue to make mistakes? We're going to make mistakes. We, I didn't say y'all, we will make mistakes. Mm. Setting boundaries ultimately involves taking responsibility for your choices. You are the one that makes them, and you and I are the one that must live with them. You are the one that made them. You and I are the one that must live with him. The safest place is in his will. So we got to think about attitude, which affects beliefs. Beliefs affects behavior. And behavior affects choices. Mm -hmm. 